Ray, you just touched on something I think that's extremely important. And the theme at the Milken Institute this year is building meaningful lives. And when you talk about populism or other challenges, it's do people feel they have meaningful lives? And many of us, when we were in high school or college, studied Maslow's hierarchy of needs and his triangle and looking at this area, we are first focused on basic needs uh, it then goes to safety for your family. And you can just start thinking about people that lost their net worth or you're reading about they're going to lose their job to technology. And as, but as you move up that uh, hierarchy, you get to loving and belonging and meaningful relationships, uh, self-esteem and eventually self-actualization. Ray, I remember reading and uh, in the book and maybe pull up the slide on Bridgewater's radical transparency and your efforts of creating this within a firm. And here was a note you got on feedback uh, to a meeting from you and the other leaders uh, at Bridgewater. Could you kind of take us back to that and talk about relationships among people? At, I remember at, at my, we didn't allow people on the trading floor generally between 6 in the morning and 2. It was a distraction. And one day we had uh, uh, one of the world's larger money managers come on the floor for a reason. I don't know how he got there. And later when I took him to dinner, he said he didn't realize how people disliked each other so much at the department because they were screaming at each other. I told him that we don't have a long time to go sit down quietly in a room and discuss in an asked on pillows why that was a terrible decision. <laughs> okay, we only have a few seconds, mm -mm. and we express it quickly, and we're on to the next thing. And it wasn't uh, anything to do with personal relationships, it's just how you expressed yourself. How could you possibly buy that security? That point had to be made quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, my point, how does it work? The firm is so unique in this sense, and when we talk about things uh, to many of the world's uh, leaders in finance, whether they're money managers, etc., they are not used to certain terms such as baseball cards, dot, and other areas. How does it work? Uh, okay, so I'm going to give you one sentence. It's a long sentence, but it's... Um, it comes from the fact that I need the smartest independent thinkers to bang around ideas well and get past those ideas, right? So um, Bridgewater is um, an idea meritocracy, that's what I mean, idea meritocracy, in which the goals are to have meaningful work and meaningful relationships. They're equally important. Meaningful work and meaningful relationships, it supports each other, they support each other. Um, it's like tough love. Okay, you can care about a person and you can be tougher with them if you care about them. And it's like the Navy SEALs, you want to, you know. Um, so it, that sentence is an idea meritocracy in which the goals are to have meaningful work and meaningful relationships through radical truthfulness and radical transparency. In other words, that anybody can say anything and challenge anybody. So if you put that slide back up, um, uh, that was the one that you were asking. About. Right. Can, can that go back up? Uh, um, yeah. So um, here's uh, Jim Haskell, um, and we have this radical transparency, and he said, Ray, you deserve a D, D minus for your performance today in the meeting. You did not prepare at all because there was no way you could have been that disorganized without preparing. Okay. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Right? It's great because if... First of all, um, I needed that feedback because he was right, so that was good. I got the feedback. And secondly, um, if he couldn't speak that way, then he would bottle that thing up. He'd have to carry that around with him, and I wouldn't, uh, and I wouldn't be good for our relationship, right? So being able to speak radically truthfully to each other to get past it. But, and then you talk about our baseball cars and so on. You have to know what people are like. People are, are, are good and bad at different things. Everybody's got weaknesses. So the idea is, um, um, can you find ways to really know what people are like, and can they embrace their weaknesses? And do you do that in an idea meritocratic way? Like if, I, if, if, 
you know, if, if I came in and just said to somebody, you know, you're not very good at this thing, we don't know if you're very good at this thing. Just because I pr say it so doesn't mean it's so. So how do we get at that? And how do we do with that and collectively? How do we acquire evidence? So if you go to that TED talk, the TED talk will really sort of convey how we sort of collect that evidence, and then everybody knows whether they're genuinely uh, good and bad at different things. Once you get there, then you know um, each person knows how to improve in a better way, or they know, which is even more valuable, who to pair up with somebody else. Because somebody may be, let's say, somebody's very creative and not reliable. Somebody else is very reliable and not creative. You put those two together, you have an effective team. Or somebody's big picture and not detailed. Somebody else is detailed and not big picture. They make a great team. Well, first of all, if you don't know what they're good at, you're not going to put them in the right jobs, and they're not going to improve. And so the whole idea is to, how do you mer idea meritocratically, evidence-based, through a lot of dots and evidence, get to the notion of what people are good at and bad to in order to have that idea of meritocracy. And that's been our secret sauce for success, right? If you can do that, because if you also have an idea of meritocracy, that people believe in, then they think it's fair, and it gets you past disagreements. You know, there was a, a disagreement that I had with the, uh, in my transition, the CEO about different things, and w but we have a process that gets us through those disagreements because everybody believes the, f the decision making process is fair. So that's how you put together a team of great independent thinkers so that you can go to great collective decision making rather than just individual decision making because nobody's good enough.